Okay, so in 1998, the legendary hip-hop music video director, Hype Williams, made his full-length feature film debut, Belly. For anybody who came up on hip-hop and R&B in the 90s, you know that Hype Williams is one of the most iconic music video directors of all time, and he still gets busy today. For anyone who was paying attention, you knew it was just a matter of time before he tested the waters for a full-length feature. And that's exactly what he gave us in 1998. Today, I'm going to be going over some of the hidden gems throughout this film, so without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and get to it. The title Belly has been said to come from either one of two things. A, underbelly, as in underbelly of the city, or B, the option that I always went with, which comes from the phrase belly of the beast. This is shown in the opening scene when we see young Tommy practicing witchcraft. This is a symbol that he and the people he surrounds himself with are possessed by the dollar. Hype Williams plays on this notion of possession with the lighting choices throughout the club scene. The glow in their eyes can be seen as two things. We can interpret that these people have been demonized and possessed to get the dollar by any means necessary. We can also interpret this as lions among sheep who are slowly navigating through the jungle on the hunt for the taste of the American dream. We see Hype Williams wear a lot of his influences on his sleeve. We first get a glimpse of this when the crew goes into the restrooms to go retrieve their guns. This is a reference to the Godfather film when Michael Corleone went to the restroom to go retrieve the gun in order to complete the hit against Salazzo and McCluskey. Hype Williams does a great job creating an environment that allows his characters to reflect the references that he's influenced by. If we take a look at a character like Sincere, who's played by Nas, he's a very cool, calm, and collected type of individual. For me, this represents the influence that The Godfather has on Hype Williams. We can also see this with the lighting throughout Sincere's house. Everything is super dim, similar to the way The Godfather movie was filmed. On the other hand, when we look at a character like Tommy, who's played by DMX, this is a very spontaneous, brash, and unpredictable type of character, similar to Scarface, another one of Hype Williams' influences throughout this film. The Scarface influence shows up multiple times, especially when we're dealing with Tommy's character. When Ox gives Tommy a mission to go to Jamaica to take out one of his rivals, the rival's name is Sosa. This is the same name as Tony Montana's business partner turned rival in the 1983 film. Upon Tommy's return back to New York from Jamaica, we can see that he's wearing a Hawaiian shirt when he confronts Sincere when the feds are raiding his house. This is a callback to how Tony Montana dresses. Another Scarface reference we see is when Knowledge calls Shamik to tell him to handle the Nebraska snitches. We can see that Shamik, who's played by Method Man, is wearing Miami's Dolphins gear, Miami being the setting where Scarface takes place. Speaking of Knowledge, this character is played by media and fashion mogul Oliver Grant, aka Power. His character name is a play on his real life alias because knowledge is power. Focusing back on The Godfather, I want to take a look at the scene where Tommy goes to Ox's house to see if he's willing to cut a deal and get into the drug business. With Ox played by the late great Louis Rankin being the most iconic person in this entire film, what I'm about to say is going to be pretty controversial. The parallels between this scene and The Godfather is going to be when Tom Hagen goes to Jack Waltz's mansion in order to convince him to let Johnny Fontaine star in his new film. Take a look at this shot in particular. There appears to be two children, along with a woman who I assume is their mother, standing in the foyer as Tommy is being guided through the house to meet with Ox. So why is this important? If you've ever read the Godfather book, you'll know when Tom Hagen goes to Jack Waltz's mansion, he encounters a 12-year-old girl with her mother and it's implied that she is being sexually abused by Jack Waltz in exchange for stardom. This scene was also adapted into the film, however, it did not make the final cut. So with this new evidence coming to light, although Ox is one of the most beloved characters in this movie, it is implied that he's a child abuser. And of course, if we look at the way he goes out in a blaze of glory, it's pretty clear where this reference comes from. We can also see shades of Goodfellas sprinkled throughout the film as well, whether business is booming or someone sticking a gun in your face. The most evident reference throughout the film is when Sincere goes back to the projects and meets up with a shorty who's on the block hustling. This scene is a callback to Nas's song One Love, which is included on his 1994 debut Illmatic. The scene is a stark image of the third verse on that song in which the young cat is worried about people busting off the roof and Nas drops him a jewel before parting ways. Although I hear people call out this particular reference a lot, I barely hear them talk about the New York State of Mind reference that we see earlier in the film. I ain't the type of brother made for you to start testing. Give me a Smith and Wesson, I have niggas undressing. All in all, I think Hype Williams did a pretty decent job for his first outing. Although the film suffers from a weak plot, I think the cinematography and the memorable characters is what's helped make this this film a cult classic. The film ended up getting a sequel starring the game that came out in 2006. However, none of the people from the original film came back to reprise their roles. 
I personally have written this movie off because I don't see it as a proper sequel. If it was up to me, a real sequel starring DMX and Nas would have came out in 2003. This would have been Nas fresh off a three album run with Still Manic, The Lost Tapes, and Godson. This also would have been DMX with his new album Grand Champ. Both were still at the peak of their career to where a sequel at this time would have been enticing to an audience. Similar to my Eve's Bayou 2 What If video that I did, if you haven't checked it out please do, I would have set up a completely different plot with Belly 2. I would have set it up five years after the events in the first film, which would make it around 2005. After lifting some diamonds from an arms dealer, Sincere would have returned back to New York seeking the help from his best friend Tommy. However, Tommy is now reformed and the roles from the first film have now reversed. I think that would have been a very interesting plot, especially since it contrasts with the Jamaican theme in the first film, now we're dealing with an African theme in the second film. Damn, that's actually kind of fresh. I might have to make a video about that. But anyway, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you all next time. Peace.